Good day, folks, and welcome back to From City to Country. I am just taking a walk in the garden after a few days of just heavy rains that we haven't received for quite some time now. Um, we had two to three weeks of just hot, dry, humid temperatures and it was starting to take a huge toll on our plants. Um, and after the rains, they just have this healthy green glow. In the last video, I left off, you know, um, speaking about the, the plants that we intend to, to, you know, grow for autumn. During those three weeks after the video was posted, well, my seedlings all were scorched from the hot sun. Um, it, yes, it's a very sad, sad thing to talk about right now. But, but you know what? These things happen in gardening. You know, we can't control the weather. Um, we didn't know the, that dry spell was going to last for so long, but it did. And since then we've had to replant. So about a week ago now, I had to reseed a lot of those. So we lost all our cabbages from before and our kale. So I've had to replant the whole lot. Um, so they're still in trays. Um, some of them have sprouted. Some of them still were waiting to see um, anything from that. So today, instead of showing you what would have been going in the ground had the plants not been scorched by the sun and died, I would have been showing you today us transplanting it into the ground. However, um, instead of just leaving, you know, you guys hanging <laughs> after that video, I thought I'd give you a mini tour of the garden as it is now. So we're gonna start here at this bed. Um, a few videos, you know, before these ones, you would have seen us filling this bed with, you know, soil and green, you know, stuff to use as manure, etc. Um, this is the bed now. The soil has since sunk and we have to keep topping it up every so often. Um, this bed we have our beetroot. I, I believe we planted this back in May. I think in the beginning or mid-May. <laughs> I didn't write the, um, the date down but yeah here is the the beets up close. I don't remember the variety off the top of my head but um, yeah we've harvested one already that one just grew like mad and it was just like a huge one but all these all the others are not yet ready to be harvested. Ooh. Over here We've got our only two remaining aubergine plants or eggplants, um, if you will. Um, since the rains, we started to see their first, first flower, which is exciting. Um, aubergine is actually something that I like. Um, so, it's unfortunate that the other plants did not take very well and I really have to <laughs> baby these two plants you see here. Um, the other ones over there. That's also, that also has a flower on there. So I'll be keeping a close eye on these two aubergine plants. Um, over here we have 
this um, gourd plant. Um, this is not the <laughs> This is not the um, final resting place for this plant. We are still yet to put this in the ground. There's a couple in the ground already, but these ones, we just hadn't had the time to, you know, sort them out. So this one and that one over there, that's another gourd plant. I have transplanted these from pots into here to replace all the lettuce that was pulled out. Uh, because these weren't in here before along with the aubergine plants it was all filled with lettuce and this is the only lettuce that's left in this bed um, yeah over here we have some red onions seem to be growing fairly well over here I have catnip or catmint some might call it um, this smells so nice uh, we don't have a cat so we don't have to worry about cats you know coming in here <laughs> uh, so yeah it's a really 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 pretty flower on this cat really pretty over here is the sweet pepper bed the sweet peppers that I showed you guys not too long ago I think it was in the last video they weren't looking so great but since then I had pruned them down to like a single you know stem or stalk or whatever you want to call it and they really really seem to like the fact that you know I pruned them um, and now they're starting to produce little little fruit. See the sweet peppers in there? So I would really recommend um, I would really recommend pruning your sweet peppers. They weren't doing so well before and now they all seem to be enjoying life. <laughs> um, you're probably wondering what all these weeds are, <laughs> what, what look like weeds. This is actually parsley that has, is it parsley? No, this isn't parsley, is it? Or is it coriander? One of the two, no. That one over there is parsley. This one looks more like coriander that's gone to flower. So here it looks kind of like a mini jungle um, because um, it's surprising how much weeds can grow after a good amount of rain after such a dry spell <laughs> like we had because um, before we managed to keep on top of the weeding but um, it actually got away from us these past few days since it's been raining we couldn't really do much you know but yeah um these are now gone to seed our coriander coriander is gone to seed now or going to seed i should say but we've put these around the sweet peppers to you know deter some pests or attract some um, as you can see close up you could probably see some wasps they are attracted to um, to the flowers here which are great not wasps sorry hover hoverflies I think they are which is great because they like to lay their eggs on hosts hosts such as aphids which we don't want around so um yeah we like them and ladybugs here is the tomato patch um it's since three weeks ago it's grown significantly um they probably need another pruning um but 
they look really healthy there are no signs of any diseases as yet I've been or we have been you know keeping our a close eye on on this um, tomato patch you know for diseasing for diseases and such um, tomatoes is one of my favorite vegetable fruit whatever you want to call it and this these varieties that are here which is the marmande I believe beef tomatoes if you can focus yep um, they're not changing color yet but I think I saw a few further down that are we decided to plant some marigolds um, surrounding the tomato plants and you know the sunflowers that you see here um, to attract pollinators plenty of them and other beneficial insects like ladybugs ladybugs they really seem to like the the sunflowers here uh, which really keeps the aphid count at bay and um, yeah the bees really really love it here as you can see this guy is having a wonderful time <laughs> don't know if you guys can see that in there but that looks like one of our first beef tomato variety that's actually beginning to blush right in there so exciting here we have our cucumber plants there are two of them here actually that seems to be interlocking with each other we've harvested a lot of cucumber from here in the last few days uh, we harvested last night as well um, there are some more coming up if I can get a good a good um, shot for you guys if you can see in there another one is coming up that one would be soon be ready to harvest there's others here another one here it's really starting to take off this one but I am aware I'm going to have to start taking off some of these leaves as you can see they're starting to get some powdery mildew on them uh, I believe that's because of the rains we've had it's been really humid as well so after this video I'm probably gonna have to prune it um, to give you know a bit more airflow through this through these plants here is another tomato that we planted this one is called mr. stripey I believe mr. stripey um, we haven't harvested any tomatoes from this plant as yet um, they're still maturing Oh, I just saw a sucker and I just have to take it off. <laughs> um, yeah, they're still maturing. Um, so far, there is this huge fruit on just this one plant. Look how big it is. It's so big. And that's just one fruit. Wow. It looks like it can almost weigh a pound or more. Here are some other cucumber varieties. It's not the same as the one I just showed you. This one is called Cucumber Ridge Perfection. Um, this one has more of a spiky, more spiky skin. Um, we, I am yet to taste these. We harvested some last night. Um, they were huge. Um, there's the other sister plant over there <laughs> um, producing quite a few more as well um, we're not sure if they're for pickling or anything but it just looked like an interesting variety 
and we decided to, you know, experiment. Over here we have our gourd, our gourd plant, uh, which is starting to take off now. We're going to have to trellis this properly, but we're going to have to, you know, organize a time in which to do that. And here's another one. This is the much loved sunflower patch that I just fell in love with as they've blossomed. It's just so pretty to look at and it just really brings the garden alive. Over here next to the sunflower patch on the ground here all the way along here is um, our butternut squash um, we are yet to find any fruit on any of these plants there's lots of flowers on them lots of pollinators around but we're still yet to find butternut squash <laughs> um, we planted these from seed definitely after you know, we had a setback with the frost. And these are the sec this is the second batch that we reseeded and they grew back again. Um, I'll show you what the other ones that got hit by the frost look like. Here is a closer look of the butternut squash plant. I don't see a fruit in there yet or a flower with a fruit at the end or anything they're just uh yeah flowering but no fruit as yet in between these sunflowers um we had some voluntary tomatoes that decided to grow and you know we just left them to be you know these oh this one needs a bit of picking up from the ground we had some strong winds these past few days as well we'll have to look at that later but yeah oh we also have some tomatoes to harvest again Oh, I'm starting to see our first, first signs of sickness on this voluntary tomato. So I'm going to have to prune that later, definitely, because I don't want this spreading to any of my other plants. Just to give you a bit of an idea of where we are in the garden, we're still here at the squash part and the sunflower bed and the greenhouse. Over there, we have another row here at the end of this squash bed. We have some sunflowers that are yet to blossom. And beyond that is the zucchini bed, which I'm going to go over to now. Here are the sunflowers. Here is the zucchini. Right. From past videos, you're going to have to go back and reference how it was before. This was filled with zucchinis. We've had to pull out a few plants because um, they seem to have caught a disease and we're not sure what it was. So we pulled them out. We left this one because it didn't look that sick and it seemed to be flourishing. but. We're still yet to harvest any fruit from this one plant. We haven't seen any fruit on this particular plant. And I'm sure now that I've said that, we're gonna find one. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there is a flower and there's a fruit. There's a fruit at the bottom of it. <laughs> So I'll keep my eye on this and I can see some signs of powdery mildew so we're gonna have to cut these off 
and keep our eye on this plant. Over here, I left this one for reference so you can see what it looks like before we pulled out the others. So this does not look like it's coming back to life anytime soon. It's just been at this stage for over a month. So I believe it's probably reached its time, you know, and we just have to pull it out and, you know, make room for more stuff. Here is another, another one of those plants that didn't seem to recover from whatever the disease was that we will have to pull out. Let me just get a closer look. Maybe someone out there might be able to tell me what might have gone wrong with this zucchini plant. Um, but as far as I'm aware, I'm not too sure. So any help would be really appreciated. Across here, same issue. Um, there are some fruit, but it's not that great. So there's some new green foliage though. So I think I'll just pull off the fruit and all the yellowing leaves and see where it goes with this one as well. Over here is another plant. It seems to be catching back from whatever happened. Oh, <laughs> this is the first time I'm watching this in a while guys. And um, it looks like we can harvest this one soon. Oh, that's great. Praise God for that. Right here is the pumpkin patch. Down here we have a pumpkin. And I'm just looking for the labels if Jeremiah didn't pull them out. I'm just looking to give you, you know, a reference as to what variety um, pumpkin this is. Um, oh, there we go. It is the Jack O Lantern pumpkin. Oh, I haven't been down here in a while, guys. But this is starting to change color. And it's huge. I need to give you a reference of how big this is right now. But this is my hand. <laughs> it's big. Put some cardboard underneath it because, um, you know, the moisture on the ground with the wood chips and stuff was really taking a toll on some of these pumpkins and, you know, insects are just looking for the soft parts of the fruit to just, you know, devour. So we're trying to help it a bit. Here's another one over there. Um, yeah, apparently you can eat the pumpkin leaves. I've not tried it yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've not tried it. Some people may be shocked by the fact that we haven't eaten any of these pumpkin leaves, but my husband isn't too keen on the idea and I'm not too sure if I am either, to be honest. So, but yeah, oh, I just saw another one. Another baby one coming. Oh, lovely. Here is an example of what happens to the pumpkin, you know, if it uh, is left without cardboard underneath. I think I put the cardboard under here too late. But yeah, um, I'm gonna have to cut this one off because it doesn't look like it's getting past this stage. Right, over here, here's the pumpkin. And we're moving on to this side. These are the butternut squashes that were, that were um, scarred, I should say, or affected by the frost that we had. Was it back in May, the unexpected frost that we had? Um, at the end of May, I think. And um, they're really, really coming back to life. They're a bit slower than the one we planted after from seed. I guess the, the frost really staunted the growth of the squash plants. <laughs> but here, here is one, 
two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven right there. It's the first flower of these ones. Let's see if this one, no, they don't have any fruit on them. Ah, I really hope we get butternut squash this year <laughs> because we're not seeing any fruit. We planted the pumpkin after the butternut squash and nothing, not a single fruit yet. Over here, we have our grapes. Here's a story with the grapes. The grapes have been devoured by deers. So we've had to put up this fencing temporarily until we, you know, get fencing to go all the way around the whole garden and put it around the grapes. This one was the white seeded grape. I don't know if you can see that in there. Um, it's starting to come back but the the deers they really cleared out all the grapes that were hanging here so we're not too sure if we're gonna get any grapes this year probably highly unlikely. These ones are younger plants so they weren't gonna give us grapes this year anyway. These are also a white grape variety. Over here as well. Over here, my husband um, trellised these grapes. This is his baby. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is another grape variety. I believe this is the red grape variety or the black one. Not completely sure but we'll see when hopefully we get grapes one day by God's grace. But yeah, we, we're gonna use this netting here to fence around our entire garden in anticipation of the autumn time because we're aware, you know, the food shortages of the forest will more likely lead the deers and the hares back into these areas to eat our food. I mean, they started to come back already and munch on the grapes and some of the sunflower heads. But yeah, we're gonna have to keep a close eye on things. For some of you may have been keeping up on the different episodes that we posted. Um, we posted some, we posted a video back in, I believe June, I think, of us um, drilling in the corn. Well, here's the corn now. We had a few dry spells of, um, a few dry spells where we weren't getting enough rain and I think that kind of slowed down the growth of the corn a lot but we're so thankful for the amount of rains that we were getting these past few days and it's forecast to rain a lot more this week so we're hoping that that will be a good thing for this corn so let me just give you a closer look of the corn. There's a lot of weeds in here, some bull thistles. They're really annoying, really annoying weed to deal with. But by God's grace, we, we deal with them. <laughs> this is about a half an acre or more of corn. If you wanna see the process of drilling the corn, I'll link the video here. This is the corn. It's 
not all of them sprouted but that's understandable when it comes to starting things from seed you know not all is going to come so that's why you have to sow a lot so you can reap a lot because you have to bear in mind that you know there's going to be deers and wild creatures birds hares rabbits that will want to munch on your food as well so you're gonna have to um plant a lot for that and more for your family let's head back here we're back to the area where the grapes are and over here I have some Swiss chard that's going to seed um, we're gonna have to move this Swiss chard patch next to it was the um, sugar snap peas we're not gonna have that here anymore um, we believe and we learned that um, grapes don't really like being sown next to these so we're gonna have to move them right we've gone past the Swiss chard and here's the potato patch they are started to die back a lot of them over here we believe they're Irish potatoes or Charlotte potatoes um, yeah I didn't know that you can how you can get these little fruit on on the um, on the plant of the potatoes I mean this is the only potato plant that gave the fruit because we had another variety of potatoes that didn't fruit like that so it was just different I we weren't expecting that at all over here was planted um, some red Duke of York potatoes um, they've died back here as you can see we haven't harvested this yet and we will do this is completely died back so we're gonna have to harvest that pretty soon um, before they start growing back here is another one. Oh, here's another one died back here's another one that's dying in here as well these are the last few of the red duke of yorks because we've been harvesting them um, already since before they started dying back and using them in potato salads but yeah these white potatoes are starting to die back as well quite a few of them beyond here has died back already so we're gonna have to um, start um, harvesting a lot of these potatoes and start sharing them with um, with whoever's interested in having any potatoes and storing some up for you know these coming months here from the potato patch we have come to the enormous bean patch here um, if you're following us on Instagram you would have seen the pretty purple seeds um, that these plants produce it's so pretty I, I thought I really thought that the plants would produce purple flowers you know to match the purple seeds but no so beautiful we haven't had any any um, beans come up yet but they're starting to trellis, trellis themselves around this makeshift <laughs> trellis that we made we've planted one two three four plants on this side and another four on this side there was five initially but I had to pull one out because that one got sick and I didn't want it to spread whatever the sickness was so um, I pulled that out so it looks better now anyway but yeah hopefully we can harvest from that pretty soon if you're wondering what we use to trellis this is basically an old chicken coop that we picked up from Facebook market um, for free um, this it's just two sides of the chicken coop that we just lean against each other to you know 
stand up and we just wrapped it around with twine as you can see here nothing fancy nothing special but it does the job you know over here is a little experiment with some beets these beets seem to be catching on quite well in the ground um, I showed you the beets we had earlier in the raised bed um, yeah these are really struggling because of the heat but they're really starting to take off um, you're probably wondering why there's dark soil here compared to the rest um, the other day we had um, some people to come and you know scrape off the moss from the roof when the workers were finished they came and they spread it here the beetroot bed and yeah over here across from the beetroot bed on the ground is our old lettuce bed we have left this to go to seed because we wanted a few seeds from them so yeah we've collected a few from here and what's left to do now is take out these this fence and rotivate this whole bed now it's it's just a mini jungle in here <laughs> ah, just a mini jungle in here now we're back to the raised beds over here we have our strawberry bed yep this is Jeremiah's favorite bed. This one suffered the most from the heat, but by God's grace, it's starting to come back. I grew this from seed and it started to have little fruit on it, but it didn't make it through the dry spells. And we got, we were gifted this strawberry it's a very strange one um i'm not sure i've never seen anything quite like it it produces yellow flowers and it has these spikes but yeah Back to the raised beds. Over here on this side, these are the giant sunflowers that hasn't grown any heads as yet, has not blossomed. This is Jeremiah's garden. He planted from seed these tomato plants over here. And it looks like we're gonna have a little harvest after this video is finished. He's got some calendula, some lavender, another two tomato plants, and some other sunflower varieties. This one is going to be a burgundy color. Over here he has his first sunflower blossom in his garden. <laughs> How lovely. Little bee resting in there. And he's also got some chamomile over here and over there. On the other side in the corner he has some echinacea and some other variety of sunflower which is the teddy bear variety I think they produce fluffy heads 
and over here he has some zinnias that are coming up so oh he even has some borage that are starting to flower he planted those from seed and there's some more borages over here lovely <laughs> so just to give you a perspective of where we are we left the garden up there over here oh over here we have the hazelnut tree that are starting to produce little hazelnuts on um, and over here we have the blackberry section so here are the blackberries that are coming through these are super sweet super sweet and before now I had not ever had blackberries in my life and I'm not sure why because they're so nice uh, TK really seems to like them as well. Yeah. I'm not sure what variety this is, but this was already on the property when we came here. They had some raspberries and now blackberries. And there's these, there are these little berries that we have discovered. I think these are hawthorns. I'm not sure if you can eat them. We haven't tried it. <laughs> uh, we have to look more into it before we decide to venture into eating that. But yeah. All along here is just blackberries. Over here we had a bit of raspberries and just outside the gate there are still a few raspberries left you can see over there on that little part here. Just to give you a bit of perspective of where we are here probably looks familiar from previous videos where we were clearing around the land um, these are cherry trees they were filled with cherries um, about at the beginning of July we've cleared them out along with the birds <laughs> these are all cherry trees over here we have some elderberry some elderberry that's ready to be harvested um, in future video we are going to show you a recipe of how to make elderberry syrup um, it's a syrup that I started making last year um, while doing some research on you know cold and flu elderberry has a lot of health benefits um, in regards to um, cold and flu so as we approach the end of summer and we're entering into a new season very soon these are going to become very handy for us we're gonna harvest a lot by God's grace and make plenty of elderberry syrup. And we probably keep some dried as well, you know, um, to keep us going throughout until the next season. There are other elderberry trees over here, but we need to clear these stinging nettles first in order to get to them. Another elderberry tree. Over here we have a pine tree. And 
and over there in the distance there is an apple tree we believe those are crab apples brings us to the end of our garden tour video. I thought I'd show you guys before the end of the season. The temperatures has dipped since uh, the rains have come back. It's a bit chilly today and very very windy. But yeah, we're gonna end the video here. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And we'll see you in our next video. God bless and enjoy the rest of your week. Bye-bye.